morning and thank you for joining me. As you can see, I am filming from my new bedroom. This is my April favourites video. I forgot what month it was there for a minute. Um, yes, April favourites, where I talk about things I've been enjoying, products I've liked, um, what I've been watching on the television, all that good stuff for any new viewers who have joined us. If you are not subscribed, I would love you to subscribe if you would like to do so. And don't forget to click the little bell to get notifications, because apparently there's some weird thing going on with YouTube where they don't show you videos from people you're subscribed to unless you click the bell. So I've heard on other people's channels, don't know how true it is. Anyway, that having been said, my biggest favourite for April, obviously, is my new bedroom. Um, and I've done a little clip with, it's not actually that little, I've done a clip with a tour. Um, so I'm going to drop that in for you right now. So this is my dressing room. I'm absolutely delighted with the furniture. I can't tell you how happy I am with the colour of the furniture. It was that red wood before and it, I just love this. It's so fresh and clean and nice and light. Um, the wallpaper at the end, we just got the one feature wall in here. I got that. Can't remember. I will link everything below. Um, but it was really cheap. It was less than £10 a wall, that a roll at that wallpaper. And again, I'm really pleased with that. So the cupboards go along here. I haven't arranged this shelf yet. It's just sort of a holding ground at the moment for everything. And down here, I used to have the laundry baskets down there, but I've now got that um, wicker hamper. I'm not sure if that will stay there. That's currently got the stuff inside it from the shelf up here, but I'm not sure I'm going to put all that stuff back on there. So that's a work in progress. But yeah, the carpet is sort of a silver grey, um, just again to match the cupboards. And I've got a freestanding mirror here. I'm not sure that's going to stay there. We used to have a big mirror on that wall, but now it's a feature wall with wallpaper, a full length mirror. I mean, obviously we've got all the mirrors on the cu um, cupboards. But now it's a full a feature wall. I don't want to cover it all up with a mirror. So I thought we'd use this corner for a mirror. I'm not entirely sure. It's okay, that mirror, but I'm not entirely sure I'm happy with it at sort of freestanding like that. Just going to wait and see. And then turning back around, all the covers have got the same doors and door furniture still. Uh, we've put spotlights into the ceiling and just painted it white because it was quite dark in here. Obviously no natural light if you've got this door closed. So uh, we wanted to keep it as light as possible. Right, coming into the bedroom. Again, we have a feature wall there. Love, love, loving my wallpaper, loving my units, um, just everything in here. Um, makes me so happy, I can't tell you. Um, the lighting in here, we've got a row of spotlights along there. That is obviously where I sit, sort of my dressing table area. So we decided to put a row of spotlights in there. They are absolutely brilliant. Um, the light in here was so bad before. I don't know if you remember my Vlogmas videos when I used to film um, at the end of the day in here and it was that horrible orangey yellow light. And then we just got like a drum light on the ceiling. The ceiling is actually quite low here so we couldn't really have anything hanging and anything hanging needed to be quite wide. So we've got the wide drum light, which is um, fine. You know, just let me turn it on so you can see it. Um, that's fine, but the sort of most important lights in the room, if you like, are the hanging bedside lights. I absolutely adore these. Ashley and I saw these when we went to Dorchester a couple of months ago in the window of a shop and loved them. Um, so we did have a bit of a splurge on those. Those are probably the most expensive thing in the room. Um, they they do need altering. They, they're meant to be more variegated in height than that, but um, that's one of the jobs that hasn't quite been done yet. Let me just turn them on. Oh, that's the wrong one. Um, they look so lovely in the evenings. I just absolutely love them. The light they cast is brilliant. It's just exactly how I wanted it in here. As we're facing this way, let's have a look at the bed then. It's the bed that I've had for ages. It's super king size, just because we needed to fill the space in here. And no two headboards. Remember I had that awful padded headboard that was built in from before. So my bed was sort of sitting in front of that. So it's so lovely to have that. The color on the walls is just white, um, pure and simple, brilliant white. Um, that's what we wanted. Also the ceiling, same color. 
Um, the bedding was bedding that I had before. Um, it's from TK Maxx. I find TK Maxx really good for um, well-priced super king size bedding. So if anyone's looking for super king bedding, TK Maxx is a good place. Um, the cushions I'm really pleased with. I picked these up when I was out with Carla last week. They are from... Wilco and they're about six pounds or eight pounds each and these big sort of Mongolian fur do they call them cushions they were 15 pounds each in Matalan which was an absolute steal because they're huge I think they're about 55 centimeters is the size um, and they're such a good price I couldn't get anything like it price wise the next closest up was about 32 pounds so for that Mongolian fur cushion that is a brilliant price um, I have ordered, and it hasn't arrived yet, a settee. That chair in, over there is going, um, that you probably remember from before. Um, and I've ordered a pink settee to go at the bottom of the bed. Um, it's arriving, it's one of those things that you order online and it says it comes in four days and then in the, the reality is it's actually going to be a month. So I will obviously show you that when it arrives, but yeah, that chair's going and we're having a pink sofa at the end of the bed. Um, those cushions on the floor are awaiting the arrival of the pink sofa. <laughs> and we have new radiator. I don't know if you remember, we had the very dark brown sort of radiator cover with gold slatted nastiness cover on it. Um, and this globe, I should mention, you've, you'll have seen this before in here, but that was a Christmas present to, not this Christmas gone, the one before. It came from Miles and Spencer's originally. I don't think you can still get them. Um, but that was the thing that gave me the inspiration for the colour scheme for this room. So it's nice to see it with the colour scheme all working around it. Excuse the paint in the corner. Um, as you can see, we're still painting this while we had a um, leak in through the roof. We've got a flat roof above here, um, which is, fingers crossed, being fixed now, but actually just finishing off the painting there. Um, coming back round, there's a few bits on the sides, but I'm trying to keep it fairly minimal in here. I don't really want want it to look too clogged up with stuff so there's things that are still looking for a home but I'm trying to keep the surfaces quite minimal I'd like to get some sort of plant or something I think or flowers maybe a vase of fake flowers I think that might be an idea but yeah overall just really really happy with how it looks this chair here you will have seen before that came from I think it was either Maison du Monde online or Wayfair I will I'll link it below anyway if I can find it and the little cushion was about a year ago from Primark um this so as you can see I'm almost finished um really pleased with it overall I think I probably said that in the clip you've just seen um but yeah, absolutely delighted with how it's turned out and can't wait for my new settee to arrive now. And that will no doubt be in my May favourites. Um, so let's talk about some things that I have liked this month, things that I've been enjoying. Um, I used to do, this video used to be quite beauty focused, but I try and avoid the beauty stuff so much in this one now because I do my monthly beauty chat, which may be a little late this month, but it will be coming up soon. Um, so let's start with a householdy thing and a very spring-like thing, and it is this. It's a little vase of fake tulips, or a little jar, I should say, and it's even got fake water in the bottom. I don't know how well you can see that. Um, this came from John Lewis. I, For some weird anomaly, I ordered, I can't remember exactly what happened, but I ended up with two lots of the same order, and when I phoned them up and told them I got two lots of the same order, they said, that's fine, you can just keep it. So that was quite nice. So I ended up with two of these, and I've got one at either end of my mantelpiece, and I just think they're so pretty, and considering they're fake, that I don't think they look that fake, to be honest. Um, so yeah, I just really like those. I think they're about eight pounds. I should have mentioned, I will link everything I talk about as far as I can below. Also all the thing you've just, things that you've just seen in the bedroom video, I will try and find them online and link them below where I can. So any information will be in that box. So yeah, I think, I think I, did I say this was about eight pounds? Um, anyway, I really like it. Yes, very pleased with it. 
Now, I must just mention, you will have seen me haul this in an Aldi haul in a weekly vlog a few weeks ago. This is the um, one of the Aldi knockoffs of Jo Malone, and it's the Lime, Basil and Mandarin body cream. And oh my goodness, this is just lovely. It smells to me exactly like Jo Malone, Lime, Basil and Mandarin. I have the real thing, the Jo Malone shower bath oil even at the moment of this, and they smell exactly the same. It's such a nice cream for 3 99 or whatever it costs. It, um, it's in a lovely glass jar. You, you know, you wouldn't be ashamed to put that on your dressing table, would you? It really feels nice quality. Um, it smells lovely. It's a gorgeous consistency. It's quite a thick, luxurious cream. It, um, it smells really nice. It, I'm repeating myself here, aren't I? Feels nice going onto the skin. It's quite moisturising. Not the most moisturising body cream that I've ever used, but it leaves a nice smell. I could actually smell this on my sheets last night when I got into bed from having put it on the night before when I got into bed. So yeah, really, really lovely. If you're going to Aldi, worth picking up one of these. Beautiful. The next product is a blusher. I just thought I'd mention a couple of beauty things that I've enjoyed. And this was from The Body Shop. I don't know if that's going to focus. There we are. It is the Lychee Blossom Fresh Sorbet Blush. And it's somewhere between a gel and a, I'd say it's a gel and a cream. Um, it's, that's what it looks like. I've got it on today. And it's not that easy to put on, but it just leaves such a nice finish. I feel like it, um, as it dries out, the water sort of evaporates off and the colour it leaves, it lasts for ages and it's just really nice. Um, I got this in the sale on the, online on the Body Shop just after Christmas. I think it was only a couple of pounds or something, really, really cheap. But I just love it and it's Lychee Blossom at 020 is the colour and it's a really nice colour for spring, I think. Nice and fresh and pink. And they do say that a pink blush is very complimentary as you get older, don't they? Um, one more beauty product I wanted to mention is this Rimmel Fix and Go Spray. I may have mentioned this before. It's called a two-in-one primer and setting spray and I've been using it as a setting spray. However, recently my skin's felt a lot drier. I think since coming back from Las Vegas, um, all that plain air, you know, it dehydrates your skin, doesn't it? And um, I haven't been drinking as much water as I should do, so all that doesn't help. So I've been spraying that on before I put my primer on in the morning and it does just make my skin feel a little more hydrated and um, plumper somehow. I don't know if that, it, I don't think it makes it look any different, but it just feels like it's a better base to put my primer and my foundation onto. Um, and it's dead cheap as well. So that's the Rimmel Insta Fix and Go two-in-one primer and setting spray. Um, I thought I'd mention it because I've, although I've not used it as a primer or a spray before my primer, I should say, or even as a primer before, it's worth a try because it's pretty good at both of those things. I've used it as a setting spray for a long time, but um, yeah, really good, cheap little product. There's one more actual product that I want to mention to you, which is something I've got that is quite new. Um, I bought this from Amazon. I will link it below. Um, this is my new makeup mirror, and it looks like this. It wasn't that expensive. I can't remember what it, how much it was. And it opens up. I don't want to blind you. Let me do that. So you can see it there. Um, and if you touch this, if you put batteries in it, this is, I haven't actually got around to putting batteries in it. I don't know if you can see the little dots around the outside are actually lights. It's battery powered and you can turn the lights on with this. I haven't yet needed lights because I've only done my makeup in the day. And then you've got magnifiers here. This is a three times, a five times and a ten times. And then another mirror on the side there. And then it's got very useful, let me just fold it back in folds back in like that. It comes in multiple colours. I obviously wanted the rose gold pinky one because it goes nicely with my bedroom. But I just love the size of the mirror. It's lightweight, as you can see. It's not heavy to hold. Um, the stand has got a little thing in there so you can put your makeup sponges or bits and pieces in there if you need to. And it just packs away neatly like that. And I just think it's brilliant. I'm so, so, so pleased with it for the money. Um, I didn't want to have a 
another big mirror in my sort of dressing table area because I've got loads of them. I've got every single wardrobe has got a mirror in it. I've got the freestanding mirror out there and it just felt like overkill having another one. So having this that I can fold away and just put neatly in the corner is just brilliant. I love it. I can't recommend it highly enough. And the magnifiers for older people like myself who are a little bit visually challenged, brilliant, well worth a little um, purchase if you're in the market for that sort of thing. Right, let's move on to TV. This, what have we been watching this month? Um, obviously, I've been away a bit, but since I came back, we have got into the series on Netflix, Seven Seconds. Um, Ashley and I are both really enjoying that. It's not particularly fast pet. Let me tell you what it's about. A black teenager is killed by a policeman in an accident, a car accident in the snow, and he possibly has gang links and the policeman is part of a drug squad in the it's not new york it's new jersey i think um place and there's a cover-up and it's the story of what happens from there and it's not a fast-paced series there's 10 episodes i think in the first series we're up to six it's not fast-paced but the character development is brilliant i really really like it um Ashley's not as much into it as I am, but I'm really enjoying it. I think it's um, from the point of view of the character development and the sort of slow burn. There's some quite strong women characters in it as well, which is always good. Um, so, yeah, worth a watch. I just should add that I have to watch it with the subtitles on because I miss so much of what they're saying because of the accents for some reason. God, that meant my mother, if she's watching that, is really going to laugh at that because I take the mickey out of her all the time for watching stuff with the subtitles on. But it really has helped me understand what's going on. So, yeah, that's really worth a watch. Um, I've also still been watching, I think I might have mentioned it last time or maybe not, um, a series that recommended to me by, by my mum called A Place to Call Home. It's an Australian series. It's a drama. It's set in the sort of post-war, early 50s period. And it's just a really nice, it's slightly soapy, if you like a soap opera type story. Um, it's that sort of thing. But the 50s fashion and cars and all, all of that is brilliant. And it's just a nice, gentle TV drama. Really worth the watch. I think there's four series on DVD. I've got a box set of series one to four and there's another series currently on the television. I think I'm right in saying. Um, so that's really worth the watch as well. I'll link it all below, obviously. Um, film wise, I've really dropped off my film bandwagon. As you know, I have got myself a challenge going to watch 100 films in 2018 and I'm up to 25. So I'm a little bit behind. Um, the latest film I've watched is this, which I borrowed from my mother again. My mother's featuring a lot in this video, isn't she? Um, set in India at the end of the British Empire as we handed it back to the Indians. And um, Hugh Bonneville plays Lord Mountbatten and Gillian Anderson plays his wife Edwina. Really good film. Um, good acting, a nice storyline, some good factual history stuff. I learned stuff. I didn't know what, how much turmoil there was in India at that time and it was quite interesting to learn that. Um, well worth a watch if you like period drama. Get stuck into it. And then book-wise reading. Again, I haven't been reading loads this month. Had lots on with going away and um, just other stuff happening. So my reading has fallen a little bit by the wayside. But I am just about to finish this book by Paula Daly. I can't remember the name of it and I don't want to go and find my Kindle because it's somewhere else in the house. So I'm going to put a picture of it up here for you. Um, but it's by Paula Daly, whose books I've read before. They're all set in the Lake District, and um, she writes really good characters. Um, it's a very engaging book. I was engaged in this from the very beginning. I don't know what genre you call it. It's not really a th thriller. It's definitely not psychological. It's definitely not chick lit. It's somewhere women's fiction I guess it has a very strong female lead um, a lady called Roz who is a physiotherapist who's in um, 
financial difficulties. She's had a bad marriage and um, has come out of her marriage. Although, although she works very hard, she's had some bad luck as well. And um, it's about some decisions she makes surrounding that to try and solve her financial issues and the fallout from that. And what I like about this book is with every step as things unravel and get worse for Roz and the people around her, um, you can really believe in every single action that you, you can, it's, it's not unbelievable, it's not one of those books where you go, oh, that's not really real, is it? You can actually see the thought processes and understand why what happens, happens. So if you want something to get your teeth into, book-wise, um, modern fiction, again, worth a read, so give that a try. Right, I think that is it for April Favourites. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, let me know in the comments what you've been enjoying this month or if you've read anything good or watched a good film or what I should be watching on Netflix. Always like your recommendations. And um, yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. And I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.